the Scottish border country and Hoyk, and back south via Middlesbrough. The third loop from Chester was through Wales, down as far as Port Talbot, and back via Dolgetley to the finish at Chester on Thursday. Hannu Mikola in the Quattro has won the last three RACs, but the favourite this time was Ari Vatanen in the ultra-powerful Peugeot 205. Could he follow up the victories he achieved in the last two major tests in the World Championship, the 1,000 Lakes and the San Remo, and win easily? Well, I, I don't think it's uh, done as easily as said, but uh, I do think that we have a realistic chance, but it's a long rally. Hannu knows this forest very well. He has a reputation of doing very well in RAC, and I haven't got that one. And uh, so in, in, uh, by no means it's going to be a one-horse race. Nevertheless, this must, Chester must have nostalgic memories for you with three years ago when well, you won the championship here. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was, uh, well, out of the eight times I have taken part, I have finished only two times, and of course, 81 was one of them. So I hope at least to finish this one. Very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. Former World Rally Champion Ari Vatanen and the French Peugeot team are riding the crest of a wave. Their new purpose-built, mid-engine, four-wheel drive, lightweight, turbocharged racer has to date carried all before it in its debut season and in the process proving more than a match for the previously dominant Audis. Hoping to dominate the Group A category is Tony Pond in his Rover Vitesse. Realistically, what sort of chance have you got with this Group A car, Tony? Overall wise, I, th I think we would hope to finish in the top ten, but that isn't isn't our main aim really. What what we want to do is try and uh, win Group A. I mean, that, that's what I'm paid to do. So who are you competing against in Group A then? We've got the, the Volkswagen Golf, Saab Turbos. It, it's quite a strong class actually. 8 a.m. and Hannu Mikola, last year's world champion, is flagged away by his successor to the title, Stig Blomqvist, bitterly disappointed not to be competing. The first special stage is the Toyota Nosley Safari Park and Vatanen immediately takes the lead. But Mikola has already been off the road and in the ensuing fracas, the Audi's horn is jammed on. Following a back injury and subsequent operation, Timo Salonen is playing himself in spectacularly after a long layoff. Britain's best hope for a win on the Lombard RAC is Cumbria's Marco Wilson driving his privately entered Audi Quattro. Coming up for five. And now Britain's Four, Tony Pond, co-driven by Rob Arthur, is two, on the start line of the first one, stage. Go. 200, go sharpish left and right through gate. This is the Rover's third rally outing in Britain this season. The previous two being the All Tarmac Circuit of Ireland and the Manx International, where Pond finished a splendid third. Oh, because we, we've never taken this car in the forest, so we don't really know what it'll do. I am very optimistic. I mean, the car in testing seems, seems very good. But when you test, you test against yourself. You don't test against other people. This is the test. 250 comes land, long right. Keeps coming around. Straight through gate. Medium right. In the past, Pond has had some widely yeah, publicised mishaps on Sunday runs of the Lombard RAC. Anxious not to repeat the process and make any mistakes so early in the event, he is quite clearly treating the roads of Nosley with some respect. The big, powerful 280 horsepower rover being threaded carefully over this very first test. But Pond's luck is about to run out once again. sickening impact against a tree spells serious damage and it's quite clear the rover isn't going to go much further. Pond tries desperately to extricate the stricken machine but it's to no avail. Gone, isn't it? Co-driver Rob Arthur voices the two men's worst fears. From outside the carnage looks even worse as marshals spring to the team's aid. Somehow or another they're going to try and get it back on the road and to the end of the special stage.
Helped by hordes of eager hands willing him on, Pond struggles valiantly with the car and eventually succeeds in reaching the end of the test. But there's nothing that can be done to avert an unmitigated disaster for Austin Rover and a very personal tragedy for Tony Pond and Rob Arthur. And so to a more reliable form of transport as a group of stalwart traditionalists herald the start of the Shell Oil special stage at Chatsworth House. Once again, Ari Vatanen is easily fastest. Scotland's Jimmy McRae, third on the Lombard RAC last year, gives chase in his Opel Mounter. This year's East African Safari Rally winner, veteran Bjorn Valdegaard, again leads the Toyota Challenge in his Celica Turbo. And the French girl Michelle Mouton is grimly determined to finish a poor season on a high note with her 500 horsepower Audi Quattro Sport, the most powerful machine in the rally. After two national rally wins in recent weeks, including a sensational victory over Michelle on the Audi National, Malcolm Wilson is in great form. As is the American champion John Buffett, fresh from his first European rally win in Cyprus. No time to spend a penny as Mademoiselle Mouton powers on to Sutton Park. Clearly the Quattro Sport is quite a handful. But some of the men are having every bit as much trouble. And the driver with the most spins to his name so far is Kenyan Shaker Mehta. Young Finn Yuha Kunkunen is part of a strong three-car Toyota entry. And Russell Brooks has made himself something of an RAC rally specialist in recent years. At Trentham Gardens, the first day's action draws to a close, but competitors know only too well that the real rally begins tomorrow. Dawn on a wintry Monday in the Lake District, and the real Lombard RAC rally is poised to get underway, high above the sleepy village of Coniston in Grisdale Forest. Despite having a fire extinguisher accidentally discharge itself inside his car, Vatanen is simply racing away from the opposition, building rapidly on an overnight lead of 39 seconds that had been achieved in only just over 20 special stage miles. In second place overnight, Michel Mouton is now having to cope with a failing transmission and she ends this test with a two-wheel drive quattro. Third overnight, Bjorn Valdegaard's fine start to the rally is destined to end with engine failure after just 11 special stages. And in fourth place is Hannu Mikola, forcing his way back up the field following that indiscretion in Nosley, which dropped him to 33rd place. Already on this test, Kankonen has been forced to stop and change a puncture, which drops him from 5th to 20th place, and he's now driving flat out to try and make up that deficit. So Per Eklund in 10th place is poised to become the leading Toyota driver. The powerful Celica is proving very competitive in the two-wheel drive race. On home ground, Malcolm Wilson is poised to move into fourth place, yet his Audi is wreathed in blue smoke, the telltale legacy of an oil seal failure, which will lead to major transmission trouble. Already the car's clutch is all but useless. No such drama for Norwegian John Hogland, however. His reliable little Skoda is once again leading its class. These early forest stages are posing a lot of problems, while Stig Undervang of the Swedish junior team struggles towards the finish with a puncture, so Phil Collins has surrendered his bootlet to a log pile. As the rally moves further north to the Scottish borders and through the forests of Castle Ur, Twigleys and Craig, so Vatanen remorselessly extends his lead. Mikola has now shouldered his way into second place, using all his quattro driving skill to try and stay on terms. And urging her Quattro Sport repeatedly to its rev limiter, Michel Mouton is restored to the fray with a new gearbox. Oh. 
As ever, the two Opel Manta drivers are locked in battle. But Russell Brooks has now lost his overnight 11-second lead over McRae. The Scotsman has turned the tables, and the tussle is fiendishly close. And determined to stay ahead of them is Per Eklund, putting together a spirited drive for Toyota as the cars head for the rest halt at Hoyk. Yesterday, uh, the, those Mickey Mouse stages, we stayed out of trouble, which is the main thing on Sunday. And today, uh, on a gravel once we got into the forest, we have increased our lead uh, quite handsomely. And, uh, and I must say, I'm very pleased with the state of affairs at the moment. Now the spectre of Europe's largest man-made forest awaits Kilda. Well, I hope it doesn't live up to its reputation. Uh, I, I will be relieved when, it, when the Kilda is over. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Well, late uh, RAC has done a retire three times in Kilda, so it's, <laughs> it's not the best place in the world. I wish we were running a little bit higher up the road through Kielda because it's undoubtedly going to be very, very soft and the leading cars have a tremendous advantage. Ten. I retired in Kielda, 82, and I have been there, so <laughs> it's terrible Four, forest. Three, two, one, go! And yet again, a night in the Kielda forest complex has stamped its indelible mark on the rally. But not that you'd notice from Button and smooth progress, here at Wycombe Forest in North Yorkshire, early on Tuesday morning, it's business as usual. The two-minute lead must be extended further. Nicholas' so far vain chase of Vartanen has taken him almost nine whole minutes clear of any other competitor. It's very much a two-horse race. Thanks partly to a puncture, Michel Moutel has been almost constantly under pressure during the night from a hard-charging John Buffon who previously snatched third place before the French lady grabbed it back from him. Now there's just a handful of seconds between them. Harewood Hill climb, and Eklund's splendid drive in the Toyota continues unabated. He's in fifth place over a minute clear of McRae. Kankonen too is fighting back strongly and is now up to seventh. For Brooks, it's been a fraught night, and after a rollover in Kilda, he's down to 10th. But apart from a restarted roof, his car seems none the worse for being inverted. Aintree Racecourse, the finale to the Northern Loop, and Vatanen's car control is a delight to watch. Having got myself into the lead, uh, the toughest part in a way is uh, behind, but I mean, it's still a long way to go, and you start boring now, and... Um... And then one bunks up in the night time, I mean, that takes more than four minutes to change. So, I mean, you have lost your lead altogether, so it's not sealed. Far from it. Back at Chester, Ari's Irish co-driver, Terry Harriman, discusses an underbonnet problem with the French mechanics and takes the opportunity of brushing up his linguistic prowess. Yes, yes, yes. Just, just starting to fall to pieces. Oh, yeah. The car is going very, very well, but it's more difficult to drive because it's bumpy. When it's bumpy, it's very nervous, and uh, I had some difficulty, in, even in the straight line, to keep the car going straight. Wednesday morning at Loughton Park, the start of the final clockwise loop through Wales, and Buttonen's lead has been stretched to over four minutes. At Mel Scott in the Forest of Dean, he's looking as secure and dominant as ever. But Mikola, four times a winner on the Lombard RAC, has never been one to abandon a chase without a fight. And although the big quattro is at a disadvantage, he's still trying hard to maintain some pressure on the leader. Eight minutes behind Hanu, Michel Mouton has been unable to exploit the quattro sport's awesome horsepower. And the battle between herself in the only official factory supported Audi on the event and the long wheelbase A2 version of John Buffum continues apace. The American has been improving all year and he's now giving a splendid world championship performance. Co driven by Chester based Neil Wilson, he's just 56 seconds behind the French girl. Hanging on to fifth place, Per Eklund is locked at a tense duel with McRae's Opal. The two cars are separated by just five seconds. 
And the scene seems set for another famous Russell Brooks fight back. He's done it so many times before, and there's still a very long way to go. Speech House in the Forest of Dean, and Buttonen scatters the fallen leaves. He's only hours away from a catastrophe in South Wales, which loses him all of that painstakingly amassed four-minute cushion. And for three stages, the lead itself. But at the 6 a.m. rest halt in Dolgetlai, he's more than made up a 40-second deficit to Mikola, overtaken the Audi, and once again leads the rally by just over a minute. I must have been asleep or something. I just missed the braking on a very slippery corner and slid wide and, uh, and turned it upside down and it uh, stopped on its roof and we had to push it back to the wheel and, uh, and then we lost some five minutes altogether. The final morning in Dubby Forest. Eklund has survived to triumph in his duel with McRae and teammate Kankanen, both of whom have slid off on treacherous surfaces in South Wales. And he's been elevated to fourth place by Buffum's sad demise on the very same stage as Kankanen's Toyota. It's been a gritty performance from the Swede. Michel Moutin has also survived a difficult night, complicated by more transmission trouble. The reward is a hard-won third place. And for Brooks, the determined fight back has been in the classic mold. Tenth place at halfway to fifth at the finish. Another impressive result on the Lombard RAC rally. There's one last twist to this event. Mikola's down on Power Quattro has led it once, and now with just a handful of stages remaining, Buttonen's car breaks a rear drive shaft, loses a minute, and with it, the lead for a second time. For just one stage, the old master once again has his nose in front. But Buttonen's machine is rapidly restored to health, and despite an 11th hour charge having fitted a new turbocharger, Mikola is forced to give way. The gap between the two fins at the end, just 41 seconds. For Ari Vatanen, it's been a crucial test of his composure under pressure. And at the end, he and Terry Hadaman have come through to triumph. Obviously, they've got a lot of bottles.